Hi, I'm Carl Taylor from visualeducation.com. We're continuing our series on all different types of lighting modifiers to help you understand them. This week's episode is all about the Satellite Staro. So the Satellite Staro is quite a specialized, unique modifier. It was also quite an expensive modifier as well, used in beauty and fashion primarily, although it can have a couple of other uses as well, which I'll explain. I've used it quite extensively in some of my own work for beauty and fashion shots. Um, what I love about this modifier is it's very hard to quantify exactly the look that it gives. We will show you some comparisons afterwards. But for me, the emotional aspect or the emotional feel that the images that this delivers, they're more in line with a sort of filmic look. It's very hard to describe, but if I can think back to the days of when I used to shoot, you know, fashion images on Kodachrome film, in a studio, there's something about the lighting quality of this modifier that gives me a sort of filmic tone or filmic contrast. Very hard to describe, but we'll come to that shortly. Now, unfortunately, as I understand, I think uh, Broncolor have actually discontinued the Satellite Staro. Um, you can get them still secondhand. Interestingly, because they discontinued it, I made a class on visualeducation.com on how to simulate the lighting effect from a satellite Starro almost perfectly. And we got a really great result showing you how to make a very budget end modifier version of a satellite Starro and achieve exactly the same result. I will tell you why Broncolor have discontinued this modifier and that's because uh, another modifier that they've created since then uh, with a slight adapt, slight adaptation can do pretty much the same job. First of all though, let me tell you about this particular modifier. So you can see it's quite a decent size. The diameter of that is about 92 centimeters, uh, making for quite a large light source. It has a matte acrylic front, which is obviously semi-transparent. Uh, with good optical density to diffuse the light. And the light is coming from one studio light that attaches to the back fitting, the back mount, so just a normal studio light fixed directly to the modifier. It has some adjustment handles here for you to rotate at your desired shooting angle. And then that light is concentrated forwards, giving you a central hot spot that gradually tapers away, the gradation tapers away. So you do have light out here, but that light is stronger in the center. The other advantage of it, of course, is it's perfectly circular, making for an absolutely gorgeous catch light in your model's eyes. Now, when I shoot with this modifier, I generally shoot like I do with a sort of beauty dish or para 88 scenario with it above my subject. So I actually come in here and I shoot through here or I shoot from back here, obviously with the cable out the way and I'm shooting from back here through that hole here. And then my subject would be sort of stood round about here. That would be up a little bit higher. Uh, so the, you know, the model would be about here and we're looking at that sort of beauty dish para 88 distance. Now, it's interesting I'm talking about the Para 88, and that's the reason, I think, the key reason why this particular lighting modifier was discontinued. And the reason is that if you take a Para 88 modifier and you attach one of the stronger diffusions to the front of the Para 88, and you position the Para 88 focusing rod uh, in the more focused position, you can end up with a light that's very similar. That is a circular, modifier with a central hotspot glow that gradates away because when we use that diffuser on the front of the para 88 what comes out the front then is no longer a parabolic collimated light but it is a light that looks very much like this and again i've run some tests 
using this modifier and then comparing it to the Para 88 with that particular front diffusion on and the results are very, very similar. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I also demonstrated in one of our classes how to create a budget level version of this modifier with some basic homemade kit for probably less than $100 to simulate this light. So if you want to check that out, you can find that class on visual education. Um, looking at some of the results of the shots that I've shot with this modifier, let's look at a few here. You can see what I mean about that sort of filmic look. There's something a little bit nostalgic um, and sort of retrospective feel to the, the shots for me. It's got that sort of film look quality to the way the light falls, the shadows fall, and the color and the density of those shadows. I just find it a really flattering and beautiful modifier to work with. And I'm very, very glad that I've actually got one of these uh, especially now that this particular one's discontinued. But that doesn't mean to say you can't achieve the lighting look because as I said, there are ways around it. Let's finish off by taking a look at the lighting modifier in our lighting comparison app on visual education and we can see the uh, differences for ourselves. So here I've got the comparison app open. If you want to follow, uh, find this comparison app, go into uh, visualeducation.com, go to resources and go to lighting comparison visualizer. And that's where you can compare all different modifiers against each other to see the results that they get, which can be extremely useful when you're about to conduct a photo shoot and you wanna know what lighting tool might be the best for the uh, style you wanna go for. So on the left here, I've got set an Octobox 150, which is a common workhorse modifier for many photographers. And we've already produced a video in this series on the Octobox 150, if you wanna see what that one does. And then on the right here, you can see the beautiful result of the lighting achieved with the uh, satellite Starro. Uh, look at the way the face is illuminated look at the comparison on the uh, amount of light hitting the background levels and just look at the feeling of light on that upper body from a large soft homogeneous light in the same position compared to the satellite Starro which has got obviously a centralized stronger uh, light to it. Let me zoom in on both of these at the same time, move them down into the same position. So you can see that beautiful feeling of the light, the way it's um, shaping the face, the softness of it. And comparing it to the Octobox, it's just got something about it that I really love. And it's something, like I said, it's that sort of density of the shadows or the feeling of the shadows that for me gives it that sort of filmic looking uh, quality. If we move into the full length body versions as well, obviously using it full length body, it's got to be used a little bit further away. So it becomes a harder uh, light source but you can see it's still got a really nice quality to it. If we go over to uh, comparing it with uh, other modifiers, let's compare it say to the Para 88 in the soft position. You can see the Para 88's got quite a bit more bite in it. And uh, you know, the Para 88 does give a beautiful crisp light, much more suited to fashion photography. This is somewhere you know, in between fashion and beauty or fashion and portraiture lighting, um, the quality of that softness of the light with the satellite Starro. However, as I said, if we were to put a front diffuser on the Para 88, um, with the Para 88 in its um, close focused position, um, then we would arrive at a light very similar to what we're seeing there. So that's the uh, satellite Starro. If you'd like to experiment with uh, different lighting techniques and learn more about lighting, head over to visualeducation.com and also you can uh, play around with our uh, comparison visualizer app uh, to see the results of all different lighting against each other.